Many kinds of electronic devices try to avoid becoming obsolete by allowing users to upgrade their firmware. The Quanshang UV K5 is one of those devices. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I've done a couple of videos on the Quanshang K5 HT, so this one will be number three. As I mentioned in the opening, one way that manufacturers try to extend the life of electronic devices and in many cases fix things that maybe should have been caught earlier is to publish software tools that allow users to upgrade their devices firmware. Quanshang recently released a firmware upgrade to the K5 HT that I understand is mostly about some minor bug fixes. Let's go through the process of updating your K5 to make sure that you have the latest and greatest firmware on the radio. So let's go through the process of upgrading the firmware on the UV K5. And so I've got some slides here that show some of the uh, steps that we're going to take. First, we're going to need to download the zip file from the Quanshang website and the firmware and the CPS are both located here and here is the web address. I'll also have it in the um, description of the video below the video. So when you get there you're going to choose the UVK5 and you're going to see this screen and so here's where the firmware is and you're going to press the download button to get that onto your computer. If you're looking for the programming software it's there too and so you can download that as well. Um, but this video is about the firmware, so this is where we're going to focus our attention. Use your favorite um, extracting software to unzip the content of the zip file that downloaded to your machine. And here are the uh, components of that file. Is, first is the updater software itself. This one is to install drivers if you don't have the proper drivers installed. If you've already done some work with your K5 or other uh, radios that use this CP210X driver, you already may have it on your computer. There's a video file that shows you a demonstration of how to upgrade it. It's not narrated, but it shows pictures of what you're going to be doing. Here is the software itself. This is the bin file that we're going to put into the radio. And then uh, it also comes with some firmware upgrade instructions, uh, which are both in Chinese and in English. Here's a little bit of the instruction page. So you can see the Chinese is listed first and then the equivalent steps are listed in red in English. So it tells you to install the uh, uh, updater software, the driver, and so forth as you work through. This is all really pretty easy, uh, but it's nice that they have some instructions to help guide you along. Now, once you've got your um, updater loaded, this is what the screen is going to look like. And so you can see here, we've got the, you're going to set the COM port. And to set the COM port, as with what you do with the CPS, you'll open up Windows, uh, do the search box in the lower left-hand corner, and type in Device Manager to open the Device Manager. Look under the heading of uh, Ports, and then you're going to see that 210 driver. Uh, and so that's the one you want to make note of. When you press the down box arrow, that driver is going to be listed along with any of the others that may be active on your computer. Select the one that is uh, proper and then press connect. And then if for some reason this comes up in Chinese, the box over here is um, for language. And if you press the drop down box, the second choice is English. Again, in case this comes up in um, Chinese. So here is the updater box uh, with my COM9, which was where the uh, driver for my USB cable showed up. 
Uh, I've got English selected, and now I've gone back to where I unzipped my file, and I located my uh, uh, bin file, that .bin file. I identified that um, by searching using the three dots, and so now I'm pretty much ready, uh, ready to go. The next step then is going to be to connect the radio to the USB cable if you haven't done that already, and then you're going to turn it on in programming mode. And to do that, you're going to press the push to talk button and then turn the radio on. You're going to know you're in programming mode when the um, flashlight comes on here, as you can see, but the screen is dark. And so that means you're in programming mode. With the radio in programming mode, you're going to press the update button. And then across the bottom in this space, a progress bar will illuminate and it'll mark the progress. It goes really fast, so it'll just be there for just a few seconds. Uh, it'll say that you're complete. And with that, then you can, um, the radio will reboot with the new firmware. You can disconnect the programming cable and you can close out of the uh, updater uh, program and your firmware upgrade to your Quanshang UV 5K is complete. The Key 5 firmware update was pretty easy and fairly fast. My update software came in English, but you might have to change the language choice using the Chinese drop-down menu on the right side of the display. English is the second choice. I was pleased that the update did not reset any of my memory channels. That was a good thing. As always, it's probably a very good idea to read your radio's programming into the CPS and save it on your computer so you don't end up having to re-enter all your data if something goes wrong. The last thing I want to point out is that the firmware didn't change how clean the radio is in terms of harmonics. Using a little TinySA signal analyzer, I found the VHF third harmonic was close to minus 40 dB below the primary frequency, but not quite. Mine is a consumer level test device and I'm not a radio engineer, so take that report with a grain of salt. It could vary a little bit either way. It was certainly better than some radios I've seen, however. Be sure to check out this video on the UVK5 advanced features and expanded menu choices. Again, if you found the video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Thanks for watching and 73.